The Lord be with you. And good morning. Welcome to our online service here for what is the eighth Sunday after Trinity. May the Lord, with his holy word, grant you much discernment and understanding and wisdom and fortitude in the faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, the Spirit, to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may be enabled by you to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the eighth Sunday after Trinity is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams, that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 20. Paul said, For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, Paul knelt down and prayed with them all. 
and there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all because of the word that he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And that I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What a sermon! Did you hear that? Amazing. No one ever spoke like this man. God has visited us. And did you see the crowd? Yes. Something is happening. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus is finishing up his Sermon on the Mount. He has opened wide the hearts of this huge crowd by opening wide the scriptures, explaining for three chapters how the Ten Commandments do not speak only about one's outward life, but most importantly, they speak to one's inner life, to heart and soul and conscience. Then, as a good shepherd and teacher, he speaks a warning. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. He concludes by saying, Now that you have heard the truth, beware of other doctrines, because the devil cannot allow such good seed to go out without surrounding it with falsehood and lies. No, it is certain that false teachers and false prophets will arise wherever this word is preached. What are we going to do? Are we going to heed his warning? Yes. He wants us to boldly consider the two kinds of doctrine, the true and good, and the false and flawed. And take note that they will always accompany each other. For it has been this way from the beginning and will be this way to the end of the world. The serpent wraps himself around the trunk of the tree and he wraps himself around your conscience too. 
He and his false words are close, and they oppose God's word without ceasing. We cannot silently sneak our way through life, thinking all is safe and secure and the issue is settled. We are not yet across the river, and so our Lord diligently warns us and says, Beware of false prophets. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hear his concluding warning in its three parts. Judge doctrine. Judge unbelief. Have faith and love. Judge doctrine. Judge unbelief. Have faith and love. Are you ready? Number one. Judge doctrine. Doctrine is not a person. We leave the judging of people to God. But all teaching, we are to judge. Beware of false prophets, Jesus says. Do you realize how powerful those few words are? Christ our Lord here commands and gives all Christians the power to be judges of all doctrines. He gives you the power to judge what is right and what is not right. You don't have to accept what the pastor or pope or any man says without any judgment of your own. The Lord tells you to test it. Test it against God's word. Test it against the only thing that has authority over your conscience. The very word of God. Why? Why has the Lord called you to know his holy word and use it to judge doctrine? Because no one else will stand and answer for you when you die. I must see to it myself how I stand before God, so that I may be certain of my future. For you must be so certain about this that it is God's word you are counting on, as certain and more certain than that you are living. For on this alone... Your conscience must rest. Even if everyone else should come, yes, even the angels and all the world, and pass a resolution, if you cannot grasp it and decide for yourself, you are lost. For you dare not boast or base your decision on anyone else. You, are, you, you yourself must be prepared so that you can say, this God says and that he does not. This is right, and that is wrong. Otherwise, no one may stand. For when you are about to die, the devil is going to call everything into question. He's going to stir up every last doubt and temptation. And it is then that you will want to boldly and defiantly say, This is God's word, and on this I will risk my body and life even a thousand necks if I had to do so. Therefore, I must come so far as to say, I cannot help myself, but Christ is my Savior, who has won me the forgiveness of sins. I know it and confess in my heart that this is true. No man taught me this, but God himself put it in my heart. Anyone can hear the preaching of the word in their ear, but no one is able to put it in my heart but God alone who must speak to the heart, or all is in vain. No one will draw me away from the word God teaches me in my heart. That's part one. <sighs> Judge doctrine. But it raises, it raises an immediate question, doesn't it? How will we identify a false prophet, Lord? Especially... If you are warning us, they come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. How will we know them? You will recognize them by their fruits, Jesus says. Not in any way speaking about their outward life, which could be deceiving. Jesus is speaking about inner fruit here, either faith or unbelief. You will know a false prophet by their unbelief, he's saying. And so we hear the second part of his warning this morning. Judge unbelief. 
Now, your reason and fleshly eye won't help out here. Only faith worked by the Holy Spirit can have this knowledge, for only true faith can recognize true faith. You may see two preachers stand in the pulpit and deliver a sermon, Jesus says. The one is a believer, the other not. And yet outwardly they seem the same. What then makes the difference? What's in the heart? Either faith or unbelief. Because one of them sees their preaching as earning favor before God, and the other does not. One thinks it's a matter of works. The other knows it's always and only for all people a matter of faith. The true prophet and the false prophet are similar to each other in their external appearance, but in their hearts, they are quite different. True prophets are known by the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Yet no one can see these fruits, <laughs> not without the Holy Spirit. They are not a matter of external things, but the inner condition of the heart, the workplace of the Holy Spirit. The apples do not make the tree. The tree must be there first to make the apples. These fruit and good works do not make one good and righteous at heart. The Holy Spirit must first make the heart good so that it may produce such fruit. And he does this by creating faith in us, a free gift. Faith is the healthy tree. Unbelief is the diseased tree. There is no work so bad that it will necessarily condemn you, nor is there one so good that it will save you. But faith alone saves, and unbelief alone condemns. That's why our Lord says that the tree will be cut down. He does not say that the fruit will be cut down. He's telling us to treat ourselves the same way, to judge our own unbelief, identify it, be honest about it, and cut it down. Let the Holy Spirit work in your heart to cut out the diseased and dead and let the healthy life of faith grow. And by the same Spirit, you will recognize false prophets. Judge unbelief. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Here we come to the third and final part of Christ's warning. Did you hear what he just said? Pay no attention to how beautifully others look when they are calling on God's name, but focus on what God himself says and requires. If we are to do his will, we must first know for certain what it is and how to do it. For this, we must hear God's word alone, which reveals what our Heavenly Father wants. First, that he has sent his only begotten Son into the world to reconcile us, us sinners to God by his death, and without our help, to purify and sanctify us through his own blood. And that he has proclaimed this reconciliation to everyone by the gospel, calling us to believe and accept it. As Jesus said, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And secondly, when we have received such grace and salvation, have been baptized into Christ and believe, have eternal certainty of what he has done for us and our victory in him by faith, his will is that we do the same for others. We love them. We live in accordance with this kingdom, obeying God and doing what he commands in the Ten Commandments, not just outwardly with hand and mouth, but in the, inwardly from the heart, as his three-chapter Sermon on the Mount beautifully described. Faith and love, 
Faith towards God, love towards neighbor. This is what our Father wants. So what have we done this morning? We've considered the two kinds of doctrine, the true and good, and the false and flawed, and noticed how they will always accompany each other. We've taken our Lord's warning to heart, judge doctrine, judge unbelief, have faith and love. The Lord has shown us the great goodness of his holy word, how it forgives and renews us, guards and protects us, May the good shepherd of your soul so guide and defend you now and even beyond this valley of death's shadow. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs, because we have faith in him about what he's doing in his grace and love for our neighbor. Almighty and everlasting God, who art worthy to be had in reverence by all the children of men, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings, both temporal and spiritual, which without any merit or worthiness on our part, thou hast bestowed upon us. We praise thee especially that thou hast preserved unto us in their purity thy saving word and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and extend thy kingdom of grace and to grant unto thy holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who preach thy word with power and help all to hear rightly, to understand, and truly to believe it. Send forth laborers into thy harvest, and open the door of faith until all the heathen and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of thy church, and grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger. And may we, in communion with thy church, and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians, fight the good fight of faith, and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth. Especially do we entreat thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Cause thy glory to dwell among us, and let mercy and truth, reconciliation, righteousness, and peace everywhere prevail. To this end we commend to thy care all our schools, and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities, by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his appropriate calling, and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and Father of the widow and the fatherless, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Except we beseech thee our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before thee, which is our reasonable service. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work thou hast given us to do while it is day, before the night cometh, when no man can work. And when our last hour has come, support us by thy power and receive us into thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.